In this video, I'm going to show you an easy yet powerful way you can get started integrating technology strategically. Contrary to what you might think, strategically integrating technology does not mean you need to have some complex, elaborate plan in place that uses a ton of different programs with your students. In fact, you can get started strategically integrating technology with just a small handful of programs because it's not important how many programs you use or even really which programs you use. What's far more important is the way you're using those programs with students. You also don't need to be a particularly techie person in order to strategically integrate technology. In fact, not being a techie person can actually work to your advantage because you're going to be modeling the process of trying new things and taking on risks in front of your students, and they're going to be appreciative of the fact that you're modeling that vulnerability in front of them since you're asking them to try new things as well. In the first video, I discuss why we need to come up with a strategic plan for how we are going to teach with technology in order to ensure that our students are still continuing to receive a high quality education in spite of the fact that most of their learning is likely going to be taking place online. And not just that, we should use this as an opportunity to learn how to leverage the power of technology tools to actually improve upon our instructional practices. If you haven't already watched that video, I definitely recommend that you do because it lays the groundwork for what I'm going to be showing you in this video. Okay, so let's get started talking about some relatively easy, tangible ways that you can start strategically using technology with your students. First, it's very important that we shift our mindset away from thinking about technology first and instead start by thinking about the goals and objectives that we hope students will be able to achieve when using technology. The truth is that technology integration can be incredibly powerful, but it's only powerful when used to achieve meaningful goals. All we have to do is look at the world around us to see how that's true. People are using technology all the time, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're doing anything meaningful or transformative with that technology. In a similar vein, it's not difficult to imagine a remote classroom or an in-person classroom where students are on computers all day using a bunch of different apps and programs, but not necessarily learning and not necessarily building relevant 21st century skills with that technology. No program is inherently transformative in and of itself in the same way that a GPS device is essentially useless until it's used to navigate to an unknown destination for which it becomes an indispensable tool. So by far the most important thing that we can do when taking a strategic approach to technology integration is to start with meaningful goals. It goes without saying that everybody, of course, has content goals that they need to address in their curriculum. And we're definitely going to get to that later. But I would also argue that a strategic approach to technology integration can actually transcend grade level or subject area and that we should be using technology with our students to build skills in the four C's. The four C's stand for critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and creativity. I didn't come up with the four C's. It's a framework that was developed by educators, policymakers, and business leaders about the most important 21st century skills that we should be teaching students in schools. Let's look first at critical thinking. Fully integrating technology into your curriculum also means teaching students about digital citizenship skills. Common Sense is an amazing resource for this. They have free lesson plans and materials for teachers of any grade level. So looking at this lesson plan here, for example, students learn how to identify whether or not videos or images have been altered, as well as why someone would choose to do that. So let's say you were having students research about a topic and they were searching for information online. You could easily build in one of these digital citizenship lessons so they could think more critically about the information that they're finding on the internet. And this is just one of many free lessons that Common Sense has on the topic of digital citizenship. If you want to build students' skills in communication, you could pick a tool like Flipgrid. Flipgrid is a completely free app that allows students to respond to prompts and assignments by creating a short video. And then students can also view each other's videos and respond to each other via video. So rather than doing a more traditional presentation about a topic, instead, you could have students plan, rehearse, and record a short video response. Creating these short videos is a great way to talk about the importance of precision and language and word choice. And in addition to verbal language, 
You can also have discussions about body language in videos as well. Many digital tools support collaboration, but one I really like to use with students is Padlet. It's a really easy to use yet dynamic tool that allows students to live post on an online bulletin board. So here on this Padlet, you can see, for example, that I'm asking a preview question to students about what they already know about a topic, and then students are posting their responses as well as an image to the board. You can see below that students are also able to comment on each other's posts. And when a student puts up something new, that will automatically show up on the bulletin board. Padlet is a really fluid, authentic way for students to engage with each other in a digital collaborative environment. And there are so many different cool ways you can use it with your students. So I highly recommend that you check it out. My personal favorite of the four C's is creativity. I make a big deal with my students about the importance of becoming digital creators as opposed to digital consumers. And I honestly really think that this is one of the most significant shifts we can make when bringing innovative teaching practices into our classroom. There are all kinds of creativity platforms that I love, but I think one of the absolute best is Adobe SparkPost. Adobe SparkPost combines simplicity of use with incredibly professional looking final products. So it's not so complex that it turns students off, yet the final products that they're able to make look so clean and beautiful that I really think it motivates them to think more creatively and artistically. And it also has so many different ways that students can express themselves creatively. So for example, let's say you're studying an important historical figure. You could have them design a graphic in Adobe Spark post that shows what they learned about that person. Or if students are studying about a particular phenomena or historical event, they could create a short video that showcases what they learned. Students can even design really beautiful looking web pages in Adobe Spark post. So you could use this as an end of week or end of unit wrap up project so that students could use different multimedia tools to show all the different things they learned about a particular topic. So I'd encourage you to go out and just give one of these a try to see how your students respond and also see for yourself the transformative impact that integrating technology can have on your classroom. In my upcoming 21st Century Classroom online course, we'll be taking a deep dive into looking at how to strategically integrate technology regardless of the content or subject area that you teach. You'll not only learn how to create a classroom that's flexible and adaptable to online learning or in-person learning or blended learning, you'll also learn how to use technology to foster creativity, personalize learning, increase engagement, give voice to a wider range of students, build better connections with families, and so much more. If all of that sounds like something that you're interested in, I would encourage you to get your name on the early bird wait list by clicking on the link below. In the next video, I'm really excited to show you a strategy that essentially became the critical piece for me with integrating technology, and that's taking this goals-oriented approach to technology and starting to strategically sequence lessons. That being said, I hope you enjoyed this video and that it gave you some tangible ideas for how you can get started strategically integrating technology into your curriculum. I can't wait to see you in the next video. And in the meantime, have a great week.